Hi everybody, um, in this video we'll look at setting up your fusion item to support uh, modeling methods that exploit the new surface strip feature of mesh fusion. Um, it's something that I uh, often refer to as hard surface sculpting uh, because uh, like other forms of uh, 3D digital sculpting, it can be used to build up features and detail from a single simple surface. Currently, with this first implementation of surface strips, there are some technical details that we must be aware of. Uh, as we move forward through the 12 cycle, we will certainly be working to make uh, the process more fluid and remove some of those uh, technical considerations. In this video, we'll look at those technical details through some simple practical examples, starting with modeling the strip geometry. The strip polys are the least uh, finicky elements and can be used in a fairly straightforward manner, either through direct modeling or through the use of procedural mesh operations. For our example, I'm going to take this simple capsule and apply surface strips with it using these two boxy meshes. So um, I just select the capsule mesh and go to the new fusion popover. The only really relevant thing here as far as surface strips is this strip profile set to 100%, which is a good default when working with surface strips. Of course, you can always set that later. All right, we create our new fusion item and then select the two boxy meshes along with the capsule and apply those meshes as uh, the miter style surface strips using this button. Next, we'll adjust some of the properties of the fusion item to set ourselves up for some surface strip based modeling. So I select the fusion item and uh, I'm going to add another strip row. Strip rows can be handy when modeling, as you'll see. Um, I'm going to add a little corner rounding here. That's a purely an optional aesthetic uh, choice. And uh, with that bit of strip rounding, you can see the corners are now not perfectly square. They're slightly rounded. And then we need to make some additional settings. Um, I'm going to go down here to uh, the mesh mode and set that to airtight final with parts. That's crucial for getting selection sets that we need for uh, surface strip modeling. And very importantly, I'm going to turn on this relax mesh topo. I'm setting the iterations to four, leaving the range at four, and you can see what that does to the mesh. And this is a rather technical thing, but it has to do with the way uh, Moto tools work with uh, polygonal normals and uh, with those uh, default uh, setting where you get those tight fans. It's not very compatible with a lot of tools, so this Relax Mesh Topo uh, helps those tools work better. The other thing I'm going to do here is turn Optimize Performance to Boolean only. Uh, that's a temporary thing as we make sure that all the optimizations continue to work with surface strips, but for now uh, set that to Boolean and leave draft unions off. Uh, deferred update uh, doesn't really help us a lot here for reasons I will explain as we go along, so might as well just leave that off. Certainly one of the simplest things we can do is use direct modeling to add channels or ridges based on the strip topology. And of course, to do any direct modeling, we first have to output the fusion item into a regular mesh. So I'm just going to do that by going here to uh, Output Mesh dupe and convert to mesh, leave all the defaults, and create the mesh. So our fusion item is automatically hidden, and we have our fusion item mesh. Before we start manipulating that mesh, there's one thing we need to take care of. Um, as those of you who use mesh fusion may know, uh, fusion output meshes like this come with pre-calculated normals, which is a very important thing partly because of these chaotic areas that border the uh, strips. Uh, it helps those render really perfectly, and you don't see any evidence of those uh, irregular polygons. But since we are going to be manipulating the strip polygons, we need to uh, free up their normals. Uh, uh, in other words, once we start uh, moving them, the normals will no longer be correct, so we need to allow Moto to calculate those normals. And uh, the best way to do that is to uh, 
free up the normals for the strip polys only and still retain those pre-calculated normals for the rest of the surface. And in order to do that, we need to select the strip polys, and those are available in a selection set. Go to polygon mode here, and under Quick Select and this selection sets popover, you'll see Fusion Item Strips. Actually, it will be whatever the name of your fusion item is. If it was fusion item was named Fred, this would say Fred Strips. In any case, we can select those strips, go here to Lists, and find the other maps, Normals, right-click on that, and select Clear. And that's going to clear the normals only from the selected polygons, the strip polygons. And with that out of the way, we're ready to do a little bit of actual modeling. Um, I'm going to manipulate these strip polygons, but before I do, I'm going to reduce the selection. I'm going to shrink the selection using the shift down arrow. And that steps it in one row, which ensures that we have a clean, a topologically clean border between the polygons we're going to modify and the rest of the model. And one of my favorite tools for uh, playing with the strip topology is the uh, deform push tool. So simply select that tool and start dragging in the 3D viewport. And you can either pull out a ridge or push in a channel. And that's really all there is to it. Uh, with the push tool, you can actually have quite a bit of fun. Um, for example, zoom in a little bit closer here. Select the push tool, push out a bit, then shrink the selection again, push out a little bit more. And by doing these kinds of uh, maneuvers, you can get a variety of profiles. Pushing in or out. All right, now to get a broader look at the kind of modeling options we get out of uh, surface strips, I've set up the same model uh, using the fusion item as a merge meshes source for a procedural mesh. So this was just a new mesh, and the first thing I did was add a merge meshes mesh op and make the fusion item the source of that merge meshes mesh op. So now we have a procedural version of our fusion item. Now using a procedural will allow us to kind of uh, dissect and deconstruct the various modeling moves, which could be made uh, just as easily uh, using direct modeling, um, kind of just a matter of what you're trying to achieve and, and how much you want the process to be non-destructive. The next operation in the stack is a vertex merge, which is pretty essential for just about anything you're going to want to do. And that's because uh, when we output a, a fusion mesh using any of the parts method, which is what gives us the uh, very useful selection sets and uh, parts, it, uh, the, the fusion mesh is not a uh, single contiguous mesh. And uh, when, you, when you use uh, regular uh, fusion output, output a mesh, uh, there's a script that uh, welds everything together. And since that does not occur when the fusion item is fed in as a merge mesh source, we need to do it manually. And that's done using a vertex merge with a very small value. Here I'm using one UM. Um, the vertices are truly coincident, so you want a, a very small value. Um, theoretically, I think even zero would work but I like to use the 1UM just for a little margin of safety. And with that in place, we're ready to start manipulating the mesh, taking advantage of the selection sets created by Mesh Fusion. And those selection sets consist of what we call patches, uh, the areas of the mesh surrounded by the strips, and of course the strips themselves. So the first thing we're going to do is apply a polygon bevel to uh, a couple of those patches we will need to identify those selection sets by name for each mesh op. And I prefer to uh, find them using the selection sets popover form as opposed to uh, typing them in the mesh op 
and then looking at what it selects. Um, either method will work, but I think you'll find this handy. So if we open up the uh, selection sets popover, we can simply uh, use the quick select feature to select various parts and thereby identify them by name. When defining our procedural selections, uh, we want to make sure to expand or contract the selection so that the editing doesn't fall on those chaotic polygons that are right up against the edges of the strips. And that can be done using the mesh op selection tools, uh, specifically the grow shrink mesh op. Before we look at that in our first polygon bevel mesh op, a quick word about normals. As mentioned earlier, uh, Mesh Fusion creates normals. By default, Merge Meshes uh, has the uh, normals checkbox unticked, and we want to leave it that way uh, because, again, we need to let Moto calculate normals. And in this case, we can't selectively turn off normals for only some polygons, so the best idea is just to leave that in its default uh, unticked state and uh, proceed with your mesh op. So let's take a look at the first polygon bevel mesh op. And in its selection section, we have specified two patches. And of course, they are selected by name in the name field there. We'll turn on the polygon bevel so we can see what it's selecting. So the first uh, select by selection set is set to override. Um, and the second one, of course, is set to add, so we can get uh, both of them. And then grow shrink is used to expand uh, by one row so that we get a piece of that uh, nice orderly strip geometry. The bevel operation itself is uh, quite simple. It's just a uh, shift of uh, minus 77 millimeters. Uh, but you can see, as a result of using that uh, grow shrink, we've got the uh, interesting part happening within these strip polygons to give us a nice, clean result, as we see here. Now, as mentioned, uh, because of those uh, subtle issues with normals, you are going to see some slight shading artifacts. They're probably not going to be very disturbing if there's any kind of a texture on the surface, but they will be there. Uh, if any of these areas are not uh, manipulated. As we move through the 12 cycle, we'll be looking for better ways to address this, but again, with a little care, um, it should not be uh, typically much of a problem. All right, so um, naturally we can also uh, manipulate the strip polygons themselves, and that's what we have here in this next polygon bevel item uh, that has the fusion item strips as its selection set, as we see here, and uh, also utilizes Grow Shrink to, uh, in this case, shrink that selection set so that we're just getting the innermost rows of our strip topology. And the bevel operation itself is, again, a simple shift, this time uh, negative 10 millimeters. By avoiding those chaotic polygons, on the boundaries between the patches and the strips, we have ensured that we're going to get nice, uh, clean results when we render this geometry. Uh, one of the keys there is to use a material that has uh, edge rounding. That uh, gives us this little extra edge, a kind of a, a bevel within the bevel, right along the edges of all of our edited geometry here, which makes it uh, much more convincing. Another approach to surface strip modeling is to convert the entire mesh to a Catmull-Clark surface. Uh, that certainly opens up some uh, additional modeling options, um, allows you to create some softer forms, if you will, uh, kind of puts an onus on you to create uh, sometimes more uh, edge beveling and edge loops in order to get the forms you want, and we'll look at that approach in another video. But when you're doing a straight polygonal modeling like this, again, a bit of edge rounding in the material will help bring it all home. All right, well, uh, that's about it for this video, and uh, please stay tuned for more on surface strips.